Hey everybody, it's Barbara and welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be collaborating with some very special and talented friends of mine in an Inspired Me collab, which is hosted by Amber at DIY with Amber. Each of us will recreate one of the other ladies' DIYs that has inspired us, so I can't wait to share with you what I created. And when you are finished watching my video, I will have a playlist in my description box so that you can go over and check out all these lovely ladies' creations that they have recreated that inspired them. So let's get started. The first DIY we're going to recreate is made by Adrienne at Full Time DIY Mommy. She created these beautiful ball fillers with ribbon and rope. I'm going to be using three of the plastic baseballs from Dollar Tree as well as some nautical rope. I'm just going to cut the end of the nautical rope off because I felt like it was too thick. So I'm gonna separate this into the three strands that comes inside of the nautical rope. And I'll just be using one strand at a time. This will also allow my rope to go a lot longer way. I'm just beginning at the very top of the baseball where it has that little pinhole. So that way I'll know how to stay centered. And I'm gonna hot glue the end piece down first and then I will just glue around that and continue wrapping it and gluing it until I get the entire ball covered with this nautical rope. Once you get to the other end, you'll just be able to take that piece and cut off and leave just enough extra so that you could fill in that bottom hole. If you do need to use another piece of rope, you can just split those together with some hot glue. So here I just cut the excess off and left just enough to wrap around and fill that in at the bottom. And I absolutely love how this one turned out. So on the second baseball, I decided to just wrap the top third with that nautical rope. And then I'm gonna come in with some of the decorative rope from Dollar Tree, which is just a different color. And I did not split this, I just used that one full size. And I'm gonna fill the middle third of the ball in and as I was saying before, when you put your two pieces together, you can just glue them and sort of overlap them a little bit. Like here, I left the decorative rope on there, and then I'm going to glue my nautical rope right under that so that it will blend in nicely. And then when I cut my other end off of the decorative rope, I can just blend that right on over top of my nautical rope. And then I'll continue wrapping the bottom third of this with the nautical rope and it'll give this beautiful different texture on the ball so it'll have this nice beautiful color at the top and the bottom and then we'll have that splash of the darker brown right in the middle and i love how this one turned out as well i went ahead and wrapped that third one with the same decorative rope then i'm going to come in with some of these smaller styrofoam balls from dollar tree and i'm also going to be using some jute rope so I'm just going to repeat this process exactly just like I did the baseballs, except the two of the styrofoam balls I'm going to cover in the jute rope. And then I ended up covering one of the small styrofoam balls with the nautical rope and then the other one just like I did the larger one with the nautical and the decorative rope. And it was enough of the nautical rope to do all of that off of one package. And I absolutely love how these turned out. I think they are gorgeous. I know if you buy these offline or in some of the home stores, they're very pricey. So thank you so much, Adrian, for this inspiration. I just love how they turned out. For our second DIY, I will be recreating this beautiful beaded garland that Amber at DIY with Amber created. I'm gonna start off with some of those chalkboard tags from Dollar Tree, and they're pretty thin. So once I remove the hanging portion of the tag, I'm just gonna take two of them and hot glue them together to make one piece so that it will be a little bit thicker. Once I get that together, I'm gonna to go in with my Waverly White chalk paint, and I am gonna paint this entire tag front and back. And it does take two coats to get some nice coverage to cover up that black chalkboard tag. Once that is painted, I'm gonna come in with some Apple Barrel Warm Buff acrylic paint, and I'm gonna dry brush around the edging on both sides, 
as well as that metal piece in the top part of the tag, I'm also going to dry brush that on both sides as well. Then I'm going to take one of Dollar Tree's laser wood cutouts, and how ironic that I picked Inspire for this one. These are so beautiful. They come three in a pack, I believe. I didn't have to paint it. It was the perfect color. I just hot glued it right down onto my tag. Now I cheated just a little bit because I found this beautiful beaded garland at Dollar General. I believe it was $2, maybe $3 for this whole piece, and I love the colors on it. The tassel was a little bit longer than I wanted, so I'm just going to go in and cut some of that off. Then I'll remove the tag that came with this beaded garland so that I can add my tag on there. And I'm just going to pull mine almost all the way up to the beads. Then I'm going to double knot it on the back, and then I'll put a little bit of glue back there just to make sure my knot doesn't come through. This turned out so beautiful, and I absolutely love it. I think it goes so well with the um, filler balls that we made in DIY number one. They just turned out so gorgeous, so I want to thank you so much, Amber, for your inspiration with this beautiful beaded garland. If this is your first time visiting my channel and you are enjoying today's video, I would love for you to click that subscribe button and the notification bell and select all so that YouTube will remind you the next time I upload a new video. Our next DIY we are going to be recreating is made by Jenny at Lovely Moments Creating. She created this beautiful plate sign. I'm going to start off with two of the Easter signs from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to remove the tags and then all of the embellishments that are on these pieces. Then I'm going to take these pieces and I'm actually going to glue them together to make one larger sign. And I'm just using some craft sticks and hot glue so that I can glue these two pieces together. And I begin just by putting those on the seams, on the outside edge, in the middle, and then I'll just add some random pieces in there to make sure it's nice and sturdy. So now our back will become our front, and I'm going to go ahead and take some spackling, and I filled in those holes at the sign. And then I'm going to take my Waverly White chalk paint, and I'm going to give this two coats of paint and let that completely dry. Once it has dried, I'm going to go in and create, I made markings so that I can um, draw a line right in the middle of each of those signs so that I can make it look like wood or shiplap. And I'm using my oil-based Sharpie to go over where the markings were that I drew out for those lines. And I did go in the center as well. Then I'm just going to take my white chalk paint and dry brush over those lines to blend them in a little bit better. Once I have all of my dry brushing done, I like to have a finished look. So to cover up all of that on the back, I'm going to take some craft paper, hot glue that down to the back, and I like to start on one side and then work my way to the other side. Get that nice and flat and secured with the glue, and then I can go in and cut the excess off with my scissors. To create a hanger for the back, I actually want it to be secured to the sign rather than the craft paper. So I just took a utility knife and cut out two squares so that I would be able to attach my rope to the actual sign. Then I'm just going to take some of Dollar Tree's decorative rope and hot glue that down into place. And I created my hanger so that you wouldn't be able to see it from the front of the sign. Then I'll just take two scrap craft sticks and put a little bit more glue and add that on top just to give it a little bit more stable and sturdiness. Once I have my hanger in place, I am then going to start on the plate. So I'm using some of these plastic salad plates from Dollar Tree that come six in a pack. I'm going to be using three of them, and I'm going to give each one of those two coats of my Waverly White chalk paint. So this is how it looks once it's done. I'm also going to go in with some Dollar General black chalkboard craft paint and a wet baby wipe. I'm just going to dip my baby wipe into the paint and go all the way around the rim of each of these plates. And once I have all of that in place to give it more of that enamelware look, I'm going to go in and add a little bit extra on each of the plates um, just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Now for my plates, I'm going to do something a little bit different than Jenny did. I'm actually going to be using some stickers 
And I purchased these stickers from Dollar General. I believe they're two or three dollars a pack. And I'm gonna cut the wording that I wanna put on there. I'm gonna cut each of the letters off. And then I'm gonna peel the backing off and stick those onto the plate. I like to start in the middle and work my way out to try to make sure that I get it centered. So on one plate, I'm gonna put God. In the middle plate, I'm gonna put is. And on the last plate, I'm gonna put love. Once I have all my stickers in place, I'm gonna go over with matte Mod Podge to seal those letters in to make them look less like stickers. And I do go over the entire plate so that it will have a consistent finish on all three plates. Then I'll set that to the side and make sure that glue has dried before I attach it to my sign. I'm just gonna line my plates up to make sure that I get them centered and where I want them to be. And then I'm just gonna come in with some hot glue and glue each one of these plates down. So I started off with my small glue gun and thought, well, maybe I needed a little bit more extra glue because I wanna make sure they stay in place. Once I have all three of these signs down, I felt like it needed a little something extra on the outside. So I took my oil-based Sharpie and went around the side edges of the sign just to make it pop out a little more. Then I'm gonna be using some florals. I'm gonna be using some scrap lavender pieces with the blooms and then some scrap greenery lavender that doesn't have the color, it's just the greenery. And I'm gonna hot glue two of those pieces on the bottom plate on one side and then I'll come in with the other two pieces and glue those to the middle plate just to give it a pop of color and to give it um, just a little something extra. And once I have those in place, this sign is finished. I absolutely love how it turned out. I think this is so gorgeous. I love those pops of color with the black and white. Thank you so much, Jenny, for your inspiration. I love how this sign turned out. You guys let me know what you think of project number three. For our next DIY, I will be recreating these barn doors by Maria with Crafting with Maria. I'm going to start off with two of these Easter signs. Again, I'm going to go ahead and remove the hangers and the embellishments from the front. Once I have those removed, I'm actually going to flip it over. The front part of these signs are going to become the back and the back are going to become the front. Once I have these in place, I am then going to go in with my favorite gray chalk paint, which is Deco Art Chalky Finish. You can find this at Hobby Lobby. Sometimes you can find it at Amazon. I'll try to have it linked in my Amazon store. Sometimes they don't always have this gray. They may have a lighter gray. Once I give that one coat of paint and the paint has dried, I'm going to come in with just some quart size paint stir sticks. You can find these at Lowe's for 30 in a pack. I'm going to start off by drawing a straight line on the end so that I can cut those rounded edges off. I like to use a utility knife and score mine and then come back in with some scissors and cut that and it just keeps it from splitting and cracking. Once I have one piece cut the two ends off the rounded piece, I'm going to set my second piece on top of that to determine where I need to cut the top piece off so that we can create edging for our doors. Once I have that marked, I will score it and cut it just like I did the first pieces. Then I'm going to go in and do the exact same thing for the other side. So you'll be using two craft sticks on each side. Then I'll come in and do the bottom as well. And I'll just take one of the craft sticks. And I actually cut it down a little bit shorter than one full craft stick. And then I can go in and piece that together at the bottom and do the exact same thing at the top. And I always try to make sure everything fits before I move on to my next piece to cut. Once I have the top piece cut in and I kind of have everything laid out, then I can go in and start working on my cross pieces in the middle. I'm just going to take two of the craft sticks, the full size craft sticks, and hold them up in place. I'm going to make X's for my barn doors. So once I have those lined up, I can just take my pencil and mark the corner there at the bottom so I'll know where to cut that. And then I'll do the same thing at the top. Now I did go ahead once I got these done and cut the edging off of both of those ends, just that rounded piece. 
Um, but I am not going to glue anything down because I am going to go in and paint it. And I know these aren't going to line up perfectly, and that's okay because these pieces right here will be cut again later on so that I can blend my X in together. But I just wanted to be able to lay everything out first. Then I'll go in with two more craft sticks to create the other part of the X, and I'll do exactly the same thing, making my markings with my pencil, and then go in with my utility knife to score them and my scissors to cut them out. Once, and I'm not going to cut the ends off of these yet. Once I have everything cut, I do go in with my pencil and label each piece because I'm going to be painting the front. So I want to make sure that I know exactly where they go. Then I'm going to um, take my Waverly White chalk paint and I'm going to give these craft sticks one good coat of paint on the entire piece, including those outside edges and I will let that paint dry. So once that paint is dry, it is time for me to assemble this, and I'm just gonna glue these down with some hot glue, and I'm gonna start on one corner at the bottom and go ahead and add my side pieces on, and then I can add my bottom pieces in and just fill everything in with my hot glue. Then for those cross pieces for the X, I'm actually just gonna hold it up there first. I wanna make sure everything lines up before I make any more cuts or glue anything down. Once I have that long piece for the two ends that I didn't cut, I can go in and mark that with my pencil so that I can cut those where they'll meet perfectly right in the middle. And don't worry if you have a few little gaps because we are gonna go in and fill those in. Once I have that set in, I can then glue it in place so I can go in and make my markings for the other part of the X. And of course, as you're doing this, we did create two doors. So you're gonna do the exact same thing with craft sticks on the other door. Once I have those marked in place, I can then go in and glue those down after I cut the end pieces off. Once I have everything glued and lined up and I've gone ahead and done my um, second door as well, I do like to have a little bit more of a finished look. So I'm gonna go in with some spackling. You can use wood putty, um, caulk, whatever you wanna use, but I'm gonna go in and fill in all those cracks. And I'm trying to be careful not to get it on my gray paint. And I'm gonna do that for both doors. Once I have all of that on there and my spackling has dried, I do go in with some sandpaper and sand all of that down before I go in and paint it, those pieces that I've already put that um, spackling on. I'm also gonna paint the outside edges of each of my signs and also go over and touch up the paint where I filled everything in with the spackling. And that's gonna give it that nice crisp look and everything's gonna look finished and polished. Once all of the paint has dried, I want to cover up the back of each of these pieces so that again, it will have that finished look. And I'm gonna cover this up using some craft paper. And I just cut my craft paper down just slightly bigger than my sign. And then I'm gonna use some hot glue to attach this on there, spread it all out, make sure it's nice and smooth. And then I can go in with my scissors and cut all that extra craft paper off. Again, you'll do that for both of the doors. Then I'm gonna set those to the side. I'm gonna be using two beads. Now I pick up my beads in a very large bag from Amazon, which I, I have linked in my Amazon store if you're interested. And I'm showing you four tumbling tower pieces, but you're actually gonna need six. And then these are the Brain Teaser Games. I'm gonna be using four of those, but you wanna make sure you get four with the holes on the opposite sides of each other because some of them have holes in all different places. So make sure you get four with the holes on opposite sides. Then I'll go in and paint each one of these all the way around with my black chalkboard craft paint. Then I'm gonna take the Brain Teaser piece, make sure you have the holes on each side one of the tumbling tower pieces. I'm gonna put some Gorilla Wood Glue right in the center at the top part of that brain teaser piece. Put some hot glue. Then I'm gonna set my tumbling tower piece right on top of it so it's flush with the top part. And your holes are on each side at the top part. 
and I'm actually going to create four of those. These are going to become the top pieces of our door. Now I'm going to take one of Dollar Tree's flagpoles. These things are super easy to break apart. I thought I was going to need some pliers, but it literally, those little extra pieces pop right off. So I popped the bottom piece off, and then that top piece that has the hook, I'll just pop that off. And I do save all my little pieces because I might want to use those in a different DIY. Now I am left with just one long rod. Then I am going to um, assemble my doors by taking the pieces that we made with the brain teaser and the tumbling tower piece. I'm going to place one on each corner, making sure it's flush at the top and the sides, and I'm just going to hot glue those down. So I made sure I put some hot glue at the top, and you're just going to rest that piece right on the very top of it, but make sure it's flush to the outside edge of the door. And I'll do the exact same thing on the other side, and I'm going to do that for the other door as well. So each door will have two of these at the top. And this is what we're going to be hanging, or what we're used to hang our doors with. And then because I'm just a little bit extra to, to add the handles on, I do like to measure it. I wanted to make sure they were both in the same place. So I made a marking so I would know where to hot glue my handles on. And those are just two of those um, tumbling tower pieces. Then I can feed my rod through the beads in the back and add my doors on each side. And what I love about this piece is that you, you can move it. It doesn't have to stay stationary. To finish off the ends of the rod, I'm going to use those beads and I'm just going to put some hot glue inside of the hole of the bead and then slide it onto the end until the rod comes all the way to the end of the other side of the bead but doesn't poke all the way out. And I'll add one on each end and then this DIY is finished. I love this piece. I love how it turned out. I have mine hanging on some command strips. You can move them. You can put a wreath in the middle, just like Maria did. And I love the fact that you could take the wreath out. You could close the doors. You can move them. I love how this turned out. So thank you so much, Maria, for your inspiration. You guys, if you have a favorite, I would love to know which one is your favorite in my comment section down below. Don't forget to go check out the playlist and see what everybody created. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Please take care.